Okay, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to council meeting number 12. Um, today's date is September 12th, 2021, and it's uh, 5.30 in the evening. Um, we do apologize. We, we have ran into some technical difficulty, and we are not able to live stream uh, this public meeting, but it is being recorded, and uh, once the meeting is concluded, it, the, the live Sorry, the recording will be posted on, on the website for everyone to uh, everyone to view. So uh, thank you, everybody, for attending this meeting this evening. Um, first of all, what I'd like to do before we get into the agenda uh, is just bring an awareness to everybody in attendance this evening. So from council, we have the Deputy Mayor Curtis Buckle. We have Councillor Kim Ganey, Councillor Roger Mayette, and Councillor Sadie King uh, from staff. At the at the office, we have Steve Martin, Krista Turnbull, Gary Corbett, uh, and Evan Woodford. I think that's uh, that's all the people I see in my list there. Um, so again, thank you, uh, thank you all for attending this evening. Um, so let's uh, let's get into the agenda. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order and uh, adopt the agenda. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by the Deputy Mayor. Moved by the Deputy Mayor. Seconded by? Council Myatt. Second by Council Myatt. Is there any discussion on the, on the call to order or the agenda? Okay. If, uh, if no discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against? Motion is carried. Item two, adoption of the minutes. Uh, so the minutes for the August 24th, 2021 meeting have been sent out. Um, I hope everybody has had an opportunity to review those. Um, during your review, did anybody come up on any uh, mistakes, errors, or admissions that they'd like to uh, have rectified before we adopt the minutes? Okay, not hearing anything. So we will adopt those minutes as presented. Any business arising anybody wants to bring to our attention? Okay, no business arising. Okay, well, we'll get into the mayor's update. Um, just a couple of points for myself here this evening. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the incoming councillors. Um, the six incoming councillors have been acclaimed for the next term. Um, the six people include uh, returning the Deputy Mayor Curtis Buckle, returning councillor Sadie King, uh, new addition Bruce King, also Laura Crawley, Steve Windsor, and Michelle Woodford. I'd uh, also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Kim Ganey and Gary Gooby. Uh, both of these individuals are currently uh, running for the, the mayor seat. Uh, thank you both for putting your name forward and best of best of luck over the next week or so. Uh, you know, I think you've got a lot of work ahead of you. Um, and I think you, you'd both be a, a great, great fit for that seat. Um, right now, the tentative date to swear in the next council is October 5th. So if that uh, if that changes, we will we will update that date on our website. So keeping uh, with the theme of the upcoming election, the mail-in ballots have gone in the mail, and they should be in your mailbox by now. If you haven't received it at this point, it's highly recommended that you contact the town to ensure um, that either a kit has been mailed to you or you are indeed on the voters list. So when completing your ballot kit, please ensure you're following, following the instructions that are contained within the kit to ensure you submit a compliant ballot. Again, if you have any doubts with regards to how to complete this process, please contact the town and staff at the town are only more than happy to help you. Um, so again, if you haven't received your ballot kit, call the town. And if you need any guidance on how to complete that kit, also phone the town. Um, next point, I'd like to bring to everyone's attention um, a circular that was received from the government of Newfoundland and Labrador in relation to the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. The government of Newfoundland and Labrador will observe the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation on September 30th to honor the terrible tragedy of residential schools in Canada. All government offices and entities will be closed for this day. Municipalities are not required to observe the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, but may wish to consider doing so this year. A motion will be presented under new business this evening to consider adopting this day of remembrance for 2021. So more to come on, on this point uh, under, under new business uh, later in the meeting. 
So one final point uh, for this evening. This will be the last public meeting for this current council. Uh, quite a milestone. I uh, can't believe I can't believe four years has, has gone by this quickly. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank and congratulate the, the elected members of council and also staff for a very successful four years. I would also like to show some gratitude to the citizens for letting us represent you over the past four years. Being in public roles such as town council can be very rewarding, but can also be challenging at times. I would say we have experienced a lot of different situations over the past four years, but I feel our town has progressed considerably and is well positioned to take advantage of future opportunities uh, that will promote future growth and prosperity. We all have a lot to be very proud of. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed and I thank you and your families for your time. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize the outgoing members of council, uh, Councillor Roger Moyette and also Councillor Jim Joy. Your contributions have been very valuable and we hope that you can still provide positive input over the coming years. So just, uh, just a few quick points there tonight under the mayor's update. And uh, with that, we will hand it over to Councillor Ganny to um, run through the agenda under planning and development. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, so for planning and development, our first item is the permit listing and there is a resolution. So be it resolved to table and approve the attached permit listing. 14 permits were issued from July 30th to August 30th, 2021 and include permits for new residence, garage, paving, site, general repairs and vending. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganny. Can I have a seconder on this motion, please? Deputy Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Discussion? Okay, no discussion. This is just, the, as Councillor Ganny said, this is just the standard list of, uh, of permits that uh, include a variety of things. Um, so if there's no comments, we'll move, move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody against? Motion is carried. Item B. Item B are two residential um, applications, 52 to 56 Duffs Road and 45 Ridge Road. The zoning is RMD and the proposal is residential. Be it resolved to approve the above residential applications in principle subject to the Town of Holyrood development regulations. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganey. Can I have a second around this motion, please? Councillor Myers. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Myers. Discussion. It's always good to see uh, new residential applications for the community, so we certainly welcome those. Definitely, definitely for sure. I um, can't remember how many we had last public meeting, but, uh, you know, it's good. We're getting late in the year, so it's, it's still good to see housing applications rolling in. So very positive. Okay, if, uh, if that's all the discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against? Okay, motion's carried. Thank you, Councillor Ganey, for your uh, for your part there in under planning and development. Uh, so we'll move to recreation and community events. And uh, Councillor Ganey, you're up again with your update. Thank you again. Um, so we'll start off with events and programming update. Uh, we have been uh, successful successful in working with the Star of the Sea as a location for some of our fall programming. Um, some of that uh, includes Kung Fu, Active for Life, Zumba, Yoga, the Youth Art Program, Zumba Gold, and also Mini Movers, which will be located at Holy Cross Elementary. Um, we're really pleased to uh, work with Star of the Sea in the use of their facility, so we thank them for that. Um, also, the fall programming flyer should be in the mail by uh, end of this week or early next, and that will outline the uh, the fall festival and the the items that are included in that. It's slated to be over a four day period, October twenty first to the twenty fourth, and some of the items that will be included there or the events I should say are the usual the pumpkin carving, spook truncular, and of course the ever popular harvest hoedown on October twenty third movie night and a tasty trail and all of those events will be uh, described more fully in the flyer so um 
uh, hopefully everybody will keep their eye out for that and uh, and see what's in store for this fall. Um, the next item is an update on infrastructure. Uh, so the first item is the Salmoner Line Park Plan. Um, so if Steve, if you could bring that up, that would be great, that uh, visual. All righty. Just give me a moment there. Yeah, Ken Sargani, sorry, we're not live right now. So I can I can bring that image in after. Okay, great. So I'll just go ahead then with the description. Correct. Okay. So the Mills and Wright um, architecture has a center along recreation park plan. So be uh, on the concept plan. I'm just going to bring up my notes on that. One second there. Okay, got it. Um, so the concept plan as presented. Uh, focuses initially on the soccer field, which is towards the right of the uh, concept plan. Um, so that piece of work has been almost completed with a, a walking track around it. And um, to the right of that is the existing canteen and wash and potential washrooms and change rooms that will uh, exist there in that part of the uh, recreation facility. Also there to be developed in the future is a ball hockey, ice hockey, or skating rink. Um, all of this is future development, of course, but it's part of what the uh, concept will be once fully completed. Um, as we go counterclockwise, um, there's a skate park and a pump track that is the developed along with the interconnected walking as is the multi-court, um, multi-use courts to be developed. Uh, tennis, basketball, badminton, and volleyball. The uh, plan sliding hill. And uh, moving, uh, continuing on that same direction is the current existing community garden and to the Left of that is the planned botanical garden. As we move down the screen, um, there is the existing dog park. And then continuing on around is the potential community center. That is the orange uh, rectangle there. Moving along in the counterclockwise direction is the, um, the existing playground and to the upper left of that is the planned splash pad to be added to that, um, that playground area. Continuing on to uh, counterclockwise, we also have the planned uh, bocce, horseshoes and shuffleboard uh, seniors activity area. And that of course is uh, directly adjacent to the parking area. Um, I'd like to point out also to the top, which of the uh, of the plan is future. Un it's currently under undeveloped, but future development under consideration. And um, there is space left available there for a recreation facility that is still um, on the radar of the town of Holyrood to have developed in the future. And also space for future amenities and uh, future work on future softball fields. So there's a lot in, uh, contained in this concept plan, and uh, the town, of course, is Ho of Holy Road is committed to to developing this in a phased approach as funding allows and as the priorities are are, are identified as we move forward. Um, so that is the the recreational park on Salmoner Line. 
Um, and then we have a uh, we have an update on the Brad's Rest overview. So as some of you may be aware, uh, there there has been a resting area developed around North Side Road. Um, anyone who's traveled along there in the last little while would have noticed west of Holy Cross Elementary. So Brad's Rest is a new memorial rest area, which was 100% donated by the Cheeseman family in memory of their late son, Brad Cheeseman. Brad was born and lived most of his short life in St. John's, but many of his summers were spent at the family summer home in Holyrood, and he thoroughly enjoyed his time in Holyrood during his childhood years. This left him with many fond memories um, as he continued to spend time in the town during his adult life. He had a great appreciation for Holyrood and loved his tranquility, scenery, and sense of community pride. Brad graduated from Memorial University in 2019 with his master's in counseling psychology. He worked with young people at Waypoints for several years and was subsequently employed by Mindful Matters as a counselor after he obtained his master's degree. Brad's Rest looks over the beautiful Holyrood Harbor and features two granite benches, garden area, stone surfacing, and bronze plaque. This project was designed and constructed by the Grand Concourse. Brad was the son of Janice and Arthur Cheeseman, and his grandparents were Monica and Arthur Cheeseman of North Arm Holyrood. And if you've been on social media at all, um, we have uh, highlighted that on the Town of Holyrood Facebook page. And it is really a beautiful addition to the area and a great memorial to Brad. Okay, that is uh, Recreation Community Events update. And moving along, we have a motion. So for the Salmoner Line Recreation Plan, be it resolved that the Town of Holyrood adopt the Salmoner Line Recreation Plan as prepared by Mills and Wright Landscape Architecture. <coughs> the plan showcases the information collected from stakeholders, including the public, into a detailed plan for the Salmoner Line Recreation Park. This master plan will provide direction to the town in both the creation and revitalization of various facilities in the area between the Centennial Softball Field and Holyrood Skate Park. It captures the interest from our residents to see facilities such as a splash facility, hockey rink, multi-use court, seniors activity area, event space, and much more. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganny. Uh, discussion? Or sorry, I have a seconder, please. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Discussion? If I can, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, sir. Uh, you know, council staff had worked really hard to build the recreation program here in Holyrood. And now we are supporting the program with the appropriate infrastructure. This plan is key to make, making sure we get it done right. And it is an absolute need for us to have the professional plan when we reach out to our funding partners to make this stuff happen. Holyrood has, seen, has been recognized by other communities and our auditors for receiving a high level of financial support through government funding. This is because we take the approach of planning first. The plan is exactly what we need to move forward and create opportunities for our youth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments? Um, for me, uh, Mayor, uh, the survey that was completed by the residents uh, provided really excellent input on their interests and priorities and will allow the town to tackle the project in a phased approach while capitalizing on any funding opportunities. Um, the first pieces to be developed include the multi-use courts and seniors activity area. So the town is preparing a tender to be released in the coming weeks, and this will be followed by a motion of council to award a contract. And we'd like to thank anyone who participated in that, um, in that survey related to the recreation and the future of recreation in that area in Holyrood. Thank you, Councillor Ganey. Any more comments? Okay, just, uh, just a few comments from myself. Uh, it's great to see that plan uh, come to completion. Uh, like the Deputy Mayor said, it's been worked uh, for, for quite some time now. Um, and there was a huge amount of public consultation and, and input went into that. Um, so, you know, I'd like to, to thank staff and the Mills and Wright, the consultant, but also the public uh, for really 
getting out there, filling out surveys, going to in-person consultations, and uh, and really having your voices heard. And I, I think this plan is this plan in in general as a whole will be uh, it's a great starting point for the town to start to revitalize uh, you know the uh, the recreation area between the ball field and the soccer field. So great work. So if that's all the comments, we'll move to uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against? Motion is carried. Item C. So item C is for the trail master plan. Uh, we have a resolution. Be it resolved, the town of Holyrood adopt the trail master plan as prepared by Mills and Wright Landscape Architecture. This plan is the result of a very effective outreach to our community through stakeholder meetings and online survey. The plan identifies a trail system which offers various levels of competencies and challenges while allowing users to choose their level of comfort. This, there is opportunity for a wide range of outdoor interaction, walking, hiking, biking, and motorbiking, all done in a safe and inviting environment. The plan, once adopted, will be actioned through a phased approach and will utilize the various funding opportunities to become a reality. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganny. Can I have a seconder? Councillor King. Second by Councillor King. Discussion? Um, I have a few more things to say about that. Um, ahead, yeah. uh, sure, thanks. One of the great things about these two motions that we've just uh, put forward is that we will have interconnections between the trail master plan and the salmon or line recreation plan. Uh, with opportunities to engage in physical activity through the trail network. Ensuring we have inclusive opportunities for residents and visitors of all abilities is important to this plan and how we approach development in an equitable way. So we now have two plans which prioritize the connection of the outdoor facilities through trails and beautification to complete a destination park for our town. And this would not be possible without the engagement of our residents who participated in surveys and provide a valuable input. So again, I just want to thank everyone who took the time to complete the survey, share their opinions, and inform the discussion in, uh, in moving this project forward. Thank you, Councillor Ganny. Any other comments? Okay, if no other comments, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against, motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor Ganny. Uh, next, we'll move on into infrastructure and public works. Councillor Myers, we'll have your update, please. Okay. Um, so a few items here. Uh, one, um, so we had a uh, letter, I guess, from one of the residents of Holyrood there in the last meeting uh, talking about dogs down on the festival grounds. Um, as we know that the festival grounds is used uh, by many people, especially young kids, as well as our soccer program. Um, so he observed people with their dogs peeing everywhere and doing their business and getting back in the car and going off. So um, it's only right that we try to protect it. Uh, so that the kids, of course, uh, have a clean field that they can actually play on. So uh, signs were installed on the festival grounds to keep the dogs off the area as used for many children's programs. Um, so we have a sign there now that says no dogs allowed, please use a dog park on seminar line. So that's one thing we have done there. Hopefully people will read that and understand that we do have a dog park and they'll go up there if they need to, uh, let the dogs run around and do the business. Uh, next item. Um, so Terry's mountain, uh, last we talked about that, um, there was a person, Harry Spurl, uh, who owns part of Terry's mountain. Uh, he was up, actually did some work around the mountainside, uh, which caused concern for some people. So uh, we put a stop order on that, as well as the government did as well. Uh, the government has come back now and gave him um, approval to go ahead and fix uh, the, the rock and stuff that's been taken away and kind of moved around. So right now, if I understand, is that the, the government has given the, the approval to start the remediation work. So he's going to be installing an armor stone wall there. Uh, I think it's supposed to be 25 feet back in the middle of the T-Railway. Um, in saying that, um, we are not prepared to give him uh, or release his stop work order yet. Um, we would be like to have uh, more specifications on the wall. So we'd like to know how high the wall is, how long the wall is, stuff like that. Because, uh, of course, we know that there's a huge kind of landslide looking area there. And uh, heaven forbid that uh, that gives way and uh, someone gets hurt. 
So we want to make sure that we have a suitable wall there, the right height, the right length, and all that stuff. And once we receive that, we'll review it and then uh, go from there. Uh, next, uh, the status of the North Arm water study. Um, so we discussed that uh, in the last meeting as well. Uh, the draft is going to be presented to uh, council or to uh, the committee uh, by this Friday. So we're uh, looking forward to seeing that and seeing what they uh, come with. Uh, next, the status of the sewer study. So I know that uh, our director of public works, Robert Stacey, is working with innovation right now. Um, they did some surveying and stuff. And right now, um, as of Thursday coming up, they're going to be installing some flow meters in six different locations uh, in the manholes around the town. And the last thing on the update is the update on the status of the work on Horizon Drive. As we know in the last meeting, uh, we talked about how the government right now is putting restrictions on us using that road um, going forward and for us to stop using that road by December of 2022. So um, in saying that, uh, Farrell's uh, construction company started today moving their equipment there and uh, NO Power and Bell actually are going to be looking at the poles and finding out which ones need to move, and which ones can stay and stuff. So work is pretty well starting on that over the next few days. And that's it for the update. So we Thank also you, have... Um, so going forward, we have 7B, which is an order. Um, so I'll read it out. It's fairly lengthy. Uh, so stay, stay with me. Um, so the order stands as, whereas there are items and refuse, including but not limited to various derelict vehicles and miscellaneous vehicle parts located in the property around 429 Exception Bay South Highway, the subject property, and whereas there are items and refuse, including but not limited to various derelict vehicles and miscellaneous vehicle parts located in and around the subject property that adversely affects surrounding properties. And whereas Section 404, bracket one bracket, bracket one bracket of the Municipalities Act 1999, provides that a council may make an order that the owner of the occupier the owner or occupier of real property remove that from the property, solid waste, noxious substances, and or things which may be hazard to public health and safety, or which advises affect surrounding properties. Be it resolved, pursuant to section four, open close bracket one, open close bracket one of the Municipalities Act 1999, the council hereby orders the owner of the subject property shall remove all refuse located in and around the subject property. The owner shall remove the two derelict vehicles from the subject property, and the owner shall remove any vehicle parts from the subject property. This order must be comp completed or compiled by Thursday, September 30th, 2021 at 12 noon, or council may take action because it is necessary to carry out the terms of the order. So moved. Moved by Councillor Mayette. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Ganny. Seconded by Councillor Ganny. Discussion? Is that the right number, 429? Uh, I believe it's 469. 469 is referenced above. Okay, the thank motion. you. It read 429. Okay, it should be, it should have read 469. Okay. Okay. If, uh, if no discussion, uh, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 And those against? <laughs> Motion is carried. Item C. Okay, we, okay, we have another one here uh, regards to the pump. So be it resolved, the town of Hoyer to approve the awarding of the pump supply and install of the lift station pump at the beach lift station to Rodco Mechanical for a cost of 22000 $913.98. Innovative Engineering requested three quotes from three suppliers and received one response identified in this motion as Rodco Mechanical. The costs of this pump are part of a project through Municipal Infrastructure, Department of Transportation Infrastructure, number 17-MTCW-21-00144. This pump is one component of the project which will see sewer and pump upgrades to the town's sewer system. So moved. Moved by Councillor Maez. Can I have a seconder? Deputy Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Discussion? 
very positive to, to see <clears throat> the continued upgrade of, of critical infrastructure like uh, like this exact piece of equipment, pumps and lift stations. So we've uh, we've seen what can happen when these pumps get old. Uh, a, it's uh, given the supply chain issues throughout the world, it, it takes a very long time to get uh, critical components like this now. And also results in, um, can result in some extensive costs for uh, pump trucks and disposal of, of sore waste out of these lift stations. So it's uh, it's good to see we're getting ahead of the ball here and uh, getting, uh, getting a new pump in that lift station. Um, so if that's all the discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And, and those against? Motion is carried. Okay. That's uh, that brings us to an end, uh, brings the public work section to an end. So thank you, Councillor Mayette. And we'll move on to business development and marketing. Uh, Deputy Mayor, can we have your update? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, business development marketing update. Uh, I got a couple of points here this evening. Uh, the first point is the, the Newfoundland and Labrador Oil and Gas Industries Association Conference is being held uh, September the 21st to the 22nd. So that's on the go now at the convention center. There are no boots this year due to COVID. However, a number of sessions are planned, which involve oil and gas, as well as other topics important to economic activity in Holyrood. Business development and marketing director is registered to attend some of those sessions virtually. Uh, the next point here is uh, the trail master plan. Uh, as Councillor uh, Ganey has already talked on, but the, the trail master plan was... Uh, is a, is a part of the business development marketing who, who helped uh, get this true. Uh, so there's already a step true emotion at tonight's meeting. This plan has been an active file for business development marketing as a component of building business through tourism. It will be an added asset to our town as well as the Wayfine sign project, which is in the process. We will cont continue to try and attract new business to the town but also provide opportunities where existing businesses can expand through a stronger tourism outreach. And my last point for business uh, development marketing is uh, the student program. Our students have all finished their, their positions and have started their new school year slash career. The final reports have been submitted to Service Canada and the town is grateful for the contribution made by the youth. They are very important to the fabric of Holyrood. In terms of finance, the program saw an input of $44,200 towards their employment this year. The money was from the federal government. Provincially, we were able to provide our Heritage Committee with a six-week student to assist them. So once again, council availed of funding opportunities to supporting programs for our youth in our town. And that's all for me, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Buckle, for your update. Any questions or comments on the update from business development and marketing? Okay, if, uh, if no questions, we'll move into public safety. Councillor Myatt, can we have your update? Okay, um, so yeah, so uh, one of the things for public, self, uh, public safety, um, as we know, we had uh, Hurricane Larry drop by and uh, give us a visit. Uh, in doing so, um, people don't, a lot of people don't understand the amount of work that has to go in by the town to get ready for something as large as a hurricane actually hitting Newfoundland. I mean, I know we have post-tropical storms and all that stuff, but an actual hurricane, that's, uh, that's a whole big level that is. So some of the things that they've done, just to give us some idea, like um, removing the fountain that was in Boland's Pond, uh, removing the fire pits and barbecue that were on the beach, uh, picking tables and garbage uh, containers removed from different areas around the town, like um, flags removed from the ball field and festival grounds, uh, garbage can covers and all that kind of stuff were, you know, sort of secured, um, as well as all the equipment in the town depot were all fueled up just in case if power went, at least we had vehicles all ready to go kind of thing. Uh, you know, tandem load of class A was delivered to Home Depot, Home Depot was delivered to the depot for repairs. Uh, you know, full skid of cold patch with liver as well. Overflow was open on the main beach lift station. Other things like removal of window air conditionings at municipal buildings, uh, having everyone on standby, you know, just, and it goes on and on and on kind of thing, right? There's There was so much work involved by town staff and uh, the, the the guys at the, at the, at the town depot. I mean, it just it went really well together, as well as the fire department as well. 
they were on call. They had all their stuff all ready to go. They had the generators tested to make sure it was okay. Um, so just everyone was just pretty well helping each other out all ready for the storm. And I, you know, from what I've seen, we fared out really well. And at the same time, we we're very prepared for it as well. So, uh, you know, big thank you for uh, the fire department as well as town staff and the, the guys at the uh, town depot. Um, in saying all that, um, also, um, thank you to East Waste Management as well. Um, usually what happens is when we go ahead and do our fall cleanup, it'll be cleaned up within the week. So if we have it, uh, say that the deadline is on Wednesday, usually within the next week, they'll be going around taking all the metal first and then the next uh, stuff after and that kind of thing. And we've done over a week. But due to the fact that we had a hurricane coming on Friday and we said the deadline for put everything on the road was Wednesday, they only had like, you know, three days at most to, to pick up everything in our town. And, and they did. I mean, I know that there had multiple trucks going around like crazy all those three days trying to get everything done and picked up. And uh, I must say they did a fantastic job and uh, a big thank you for that because, you know, I, people were kind of concerned that there was going to be all this stuff blown all over the town kind of thing. And then who's going to pick it up after? So uh, it was just great that they were able to go ahead and uh, get that all picked up before the storm hit. Um, next, I want to talk about uh, the fire department uh, expansion. Um, so right now, uh, the fire department expansion that was completed the end of August. I know that I think it was supposed to be the end of September. I think it was supposed to be done. So they completed a month early, which is great. Uh, it's a 35 by 30 room. It can hold up to 75 people. It can be used as a training room. It can be used as a warmer place as well, because the generator is actually hooked up as well. So there will be a nice place if there any ever happens and we need a warm place for residents of Holy Road. We can actually go to that room. It can hold 75 people. So, so it's great to see that actually we have that uh, available to, for our, uh, for any kind of issues or any kind of storms that we have going forward. Um, and last, uh, fire inspections. So, um, as everyone knows that so we do fire inspections, we do fire inspections, um, especially out on Samner line. Um, the businesses around the town and Samner line are required to have an inspection every year. So in regards to Samner line, so outside of the town of Holyrood, um, fire chief Evan Woodford, uh, has proposed a pay scale and sent the Eastern Waste Services Board to be reviewed. Um, we haven't heard a response back from them yet due to vacations and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, the, the fee is not going to be one solid fee. So the fee is like due to the size of the building, uh, the time to complete the inspection, inspection, stuff like that. So it's all variable, I guess you could say, in the, uh, you know, in, I guess, the, the pay scale. So um, what we had planned on doing was there's a fee for the inspection and then a smaller fee for return visits within the year. So if we if something fails during the inspection, we have to come back at a later time, then that's not going to be free, of course. We have some more, some more resources to go back there and do the return visit, and that's going to be a smaller fee. And that's, of course, within the one year of the inspection. And that is it for public safety. Everything seems to be going well. Thank you, Councillor Minus. Any questions from Council on that update? Okay, if, uh, if no questions, we'll move along to Corporate Services. Councillor King. <coughs> we have a bank balance today of $13,424.63. General, be it resolved that accounts is tabled in the amount of $126,290.13, check number DO2103, to DO2145 and O42402 to O42465, the approved for payment from the general account. So moved. Moved by Councillor King. Can I have a seconder? Can I have a seconder, please? No, Councillor Ganny. Seconded by Councillor Ganny. Discussion. Okay, if uh, no discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. And, and the those, second. Those against. Motion is carried. The next one, be it resolved to transfer 125000 from the premium investment to general accounts. So moved. Moved by Councillor King. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Mayet. Councillor, Councillor Mayet. Second that one. Discussion. 
Okay, if no discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against? Motion's carried. New business. Councillor Ganey. Okay, first <laughs> item is communications plan. Be it resolved that the town of Holyrood adopt the communications plan as prepared for the town by JW Consulting Associates in response to council's request to prepare a defined plan which would assist the town in improving both internal and external communications. This plan was prepared in 2020 and has been vetted carefully through the communications committee which was established last spring and reported through a mayor's update. Once adopted, the refinement and implementation of the associated policies and procedures will continue enabling the town to action the plan as a part of its daily operations. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganey. Could I have a seconder? Deputy Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Discussion. Mr. Mayor, if I could just make a comment. Yes, sir. Uh, the communication plan is, is a very important you know, uh, document, you know, I mean, engage with residents. This document is to God to help us ensure we are making the best efforts possible, both within the organization and outside the organization. Clear communication is, path is extremely important when dealing with council issues. It's a great start. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Any other comments on, on that motion? Uh, just a couple of comments from myself. Um, so all of our policies around um, communications and correspondence internally and externally, those will flow from this document. And just so that the public is aware, the first guiding document to be developed, which is being worked on as we speak, will be for the processing of council correspondence, how that's handled and how, how we communicate directly with the public. And much of the guiding documents will, will include how bi-directional communication is handled in an effort to improve engagement and transparency with the community. Thank you, Councillor Ganey. And uh, I, I agree with the, with the comments uh, on this motion. Um, you know, it's very important to note, like has been said previously, this, this document will be used to form other documents. And you know that work has already begun. Um, unfortunately, this council didn't get all those documents uh, finished and, uh, and put out, but they're at a very, very good stage for the incoming council to, to pick right up and, uh, and continue on on our road to improving communication. So thank you all for that. Any more comments? Okay, if there's no, uh, no further comments, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against? Motion's carried. Okay, next item is um, around Truth and Reconciliation Day. Be it resolved that the town of Holyrood recognize September 30th as Truth and Reconciliation Day and will add the day as a statutory holiday in the town for this year, 2021. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ganey. Can I have a seconder, please? Deputy Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Discussion? Um, for me, so we have a little bit more information around this, and I know that you spoke to it in the Mayor's update. However, um, just to give a little bit more detail, the day has been created to give everyone an opportunity to recognize and commemorate the legacy of residential schools, which more than 150,000 First Nations, Métis, and Inuit children were forced to attend between the 1870s and 1997. Both the federal government of Canada and the provincial government of Newfoundland recognize the significance of this day. And Holyrood Council feels it is important for our town to honor those who were lost and the survivors, families, and communities who continue to grieve. Thank you, Councillor Ganey. Uh, any other comments on this motion? This is uh, Councillor Maya. Go ahead. Um, myself, myself, I have Métis heritage. Um, so when I seen this Truth and Reconciliation Day, it really hit home for me. Um, you know, the, the, the stuff that happened with the children forced uh, to attend the schools and everything, uh, and everything that happened after that is just uh, mind-blowing and shocking beyond belief. So, uh, you know, for the federal government, as well as uh, our town, to have a day of Truth and Reconciliation, uh, I think it's uh, fantastic and just goes to show that there's a, a small step towards, um, you know, making all this stuff known and the atrocities known that's happened and covered up for so long. 
Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Deputy Mayor. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. It is very important for Saudi to recognize the honor and pain suffered by the First Nations, Métis, and Indian children. This single day of recognition is pale in comparison to the suffering of those children, their relatives, and society as a whole. It is an opportunity to remember those who lost their lives, to honor those who survived together with their families and relatives. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Just to, just from myself, I wholeheartedly support this uh, <clears throat> this day of remembrance. Um, you know, when we started hearing about uh, residential schools not too long ago, it was something that you know I'm not that old, and it was never ever taught, or it was never you know we were never given this in, in a history lesson. And when all this information started to become un uncovered about what went on, I was just amazed that that things like this happen in Canada. Um, so again, you know, it's, uh, it is a day we definitely have to look back on and our time we have to look back on and then learn from those mistakes. So hopefully this, uh, this day of remembrance is a, is a step in the right direction to, uh, to do that. So if that's all the comments, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor. Aye. 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 And those against motion is carried. Uh, okay, that's the end of new business. Let's do a go around. Uh, first on the list is Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick little uh, note here for myself this evening. I would like to take the opportunity to recognize my fellow councillors and Mayor Costello for the tremendous effort put forward on behalf of our town. Being a member of council requires a strong dedication to listen and a willingness to be open to change and an awareness of what is important to the residents of all ages and abilities. This council has met, met many challenges and many successes. The key is that you, my fellow councillors, have allowed yourself to try to improve council itself as well as, an import, as well as improve the town. Kevin, your leadership has been very powerful and has made a huge difference in how we function and get things done. Thank you for your leadership. Roger, Sadie, and Kim, your commitment to your town and how you come to meetings prepared to talk about, about the things that matter has certainly made me think about the things, things differently and that is very important going forward with a new council career. Well, while we may have had our differences, opinions, we did so with respect. To, G to Jim Joy, Councillor Joy, who's not here this evening with us, but a very valued member of our council. You have been a single force for the infrastructure development in this town. You are a very dedicated member of our community and you have a special ability to see what needs to be done and how to get it done. I will never forget the many times you said, it's the residents that count. We have to improve our town so that we can have a better life. Services in our town are key, was your favorite statement. I wish all of you who are leaving luck in luck and do a, and a huge thank you. To our new councillors coming in, I look forward to your new perspective and I will work with you to make this town the best it can be. It only working together with our staff and council that we will achieve great things. I look forward to being a part of a great team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thanks, uh, thanks for the kind words for sure, and uh, agree with uh, with all your, all your comments there. Uh, next on the list is uh, Councillor Ganny. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to echo some of Curtis's comments. Um, this last uh, term of council has been an interesting one and a very rewarding one. And it's been an honor to uh, to serve the residents of this community in the last uh, term and, of course, prior term. Um, it's been very, very rewarding to work with uh, this present council and uh, staff at the at the town. We have an excellent town staff. And, you know, it's been a very cohesive group. And in the last eight months, Kevin, your leadership um, has been really wonderful. It's been 
um, inspiring really, uh, in how you handle issues and how you handle, um, you know, the work, the tremendous amount of work that's involved with, with being on council and then stepping in as mayor. So thank you for everything that you've done. Um, it has been a pleasure to work with all of, uh, all of my council colleagues. Um, special thank you, of course, to Jim and Sadie, who've been there for so long. Sadie's coming back and Jim is uh, retiring to the next phase of uh, hanging out with his family and his grandkids and stuff. And uh, it's been, I've learned an awful lot from both of them as well. And uh, so I wish Jim the best of luck in his retirement and Sadie the best of luck in, the, in her next term. Um, Roger, it's been a pleasure working with you as well. And I know that you're, uh, you've, you've finished your terms now in council and it's been really fantastic working with you as well. It's been a really good team. Um, Curtis, I know you're coming back, uh, to council as well. And, uh, it's been fantastic working with you. You've always got the, uh, the residents front of mind when you're making your decisions. Um, Finally, I don't know if I'll be back around the table as after next week. Um, hopefully I will be, but if I'm not, I do still wish everybody best of luck in the future growth and direction of the town. And if I am back, um, I'm looking forward to working with everybody in the new team. And I'd just like to welcome the the new acclaimed counselors to, to municipal uh, politics and municipal government. And I think that it's a, a great team, a diverse team. and I think, you know, with the new fresh ideas that are going to come forward, uh, it's certainly a, a positive, positive hope for an optimism for uh, future growth of the town and the direction that it will go in. So regardless of what happens next week, uh, it's been a, a delight the last eight years. And, um, you know, I wish nothing but the best for town staff and for council. And I think that that is it. for. Oh, that is not it for me. I did have one more item to update on. Um, just so everybody is aware, there is a community um, update that will be released to residents by the end of this week. This is a document that we've been working on for some time. Um, and it is, uh, you know, we had we did uh, run into a few little delays, but it will be ready to come out by the end of this week or maybe mid next week. Uh, we're not quite sure, depending on when it comes back from the printers. Um, this is the end of this council's term, as we've all just been talking about. And the update basically is to communicate to residents the work that has been completed by council and staff um, at this point in the year. And of course, in, in previous um, terms, not terms, sorry, previous uh, years. It'll be posted on the social media channels and our website. And of course, as I mentioned, the printed copy will go out so that people have a good understanding of the kind of work that's been completed. Um, and, and, you know, there's been a lot of uh, work and effort and pride in, in the work that's been done around infrastructure, public works, recreation, business development and marketing, and the list goes on, public safety. Um, so this is just to highlight some of that work so that uh, residents understand what's happening and to, again, improve how we communicate um, out the work that's happening. Um, and again, thank you to everybody around the table. It's been an absolute pleasure working with all of you. Thank you, Councillor Ganny. Uh, let's move on to Councillor King. Oh my God, what can I say? <laughs> Another four years gone by. Four out of 24. Anyway, Kevin, the first my thought, first thoughts are thank you, Kevin. You stepped up to the plate when we needed a new mayor. You did a fantastic job. You listened. You made great decisions. So thank you so much. I also feel it's been a great four years. We've seen a lot of improvements, and that's thanks to our council and staff working together. I have a sincere appreciation for my fellow counselors. They gave their time and their talents very willingly to make Holyrood a better place to live. It's not always easy. Finding time, arranging a schedule to attend the many meetings. Sometimes we have many challenges to face, especially when there's controversial decisions. Things are not always what they seem or people don't see it that way. And we come home and we make a decision. We second guess ourselves and say, did I make the right decision? Did we do the best for our town? But be that as it may, it is what it is. And at the end, I'd like to say, 
It's been a great four years. Thank you to all the people who made it that way. And I'm really looking forward to the next four years. Hopefully I'll be alive to see it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. So, Councillor King, this will be, this is 20 years for you now or 24? 20, 24. You're at 24 now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I came with the building. <laughs> <laughs> and not the current one, the previous one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Councillor King. Uh, Councillor Myatt, did I already, uh, you already do your go around or no? Nope, not yet. Okay, okay, you're up. Yeah. So yeah, so for me, I've been on council for eight years. Um, I know when I first started, I, I contacted uh, Harry Hamlin and asked him sort of his his expertise of should I or shouldn't I run and stuff. And he said, uh, it's a very rewarding, but it's also a lot of work. And uh, you know, he and he wasn't he wasn't too far from the truth because. Uh, you know, over the last eight years, there's been many ups and downs um, and working with staff and council. And uh, it's just been an amazing, I guess, uh, part of my life, I guess you could say, because for me, I always try to live life. So I'm always trying different things and doing different activities. And because, you know, when you go to an old age home, you want to have all kinds of stories to tell people. And to me, being on council for eight years is another one of those stories I can tell my grandkids and all that stuff of things I've done in my lifetime. And uh, I just got to say, you know, thank you to town staff. Thank you for the depot workers. Uh, thank you to the residents of Holyrood um, to allow me to represent them for the last eight years. Um, a lot of times um, we haven't really, you know, seen eye to eye. I've had some people get mad at me to the point that they're spitting as they're talking. Um, you know, those are times that's uncomfortable, but you have to take it because it's part of the job. And there's other times that people come and give you a hug. So, you know, you get the, you know, you get one side to the other side. And uh, it really is an eye opener for what happens when it, with municipal politics. So it, it really was an eye opener for me. It was definitely a great learning experience for me. And, you know, when I first joined council, I want to thank Sadie and Jim and Gary Gooby um, for being the senior people and Curtis Buckle for being the senior people as well that are on the council that helped us learn more about the rules and what we, you know, what we need to do to make sure that Holy is moving in a forward direction. Because I know that when I started on council, uh, there were some things like the rubber plant was still up. It wasn't torn down. I know that previous council, to me, was in the works of getting it torn down. But our last eight years were the years that actually got it torn down, new businesses, Tim Hortons, all that kind of stuff, as well as the playgrounds. I mean, when I started the council, the playground up there had, it was pretty old, falling apart. And like there was talks of getting new stuff. But, you know, in the last eight years, we got new playgrounds in Holland Park. We got a new playground up at the the, the Holyrood playground itself. And now we're talking about going with this whole recreation area where the playground is now. So that's, you know, to see us go from where it was to where it's going to be, it's uh, just amazing to see. So, uh, you know, I, I do feel Holyrood's moving in a positive direction, you know, and, you know, it just takes a lot of work by town staff as well as the councillors. Because a lot of time people don't realize, I think it's probably one, one meeting a week and that's about it. I've had, I've had weeks where it's been seven meetings in one week. And that's a lot of personal time to give up, especially when it's in the middle of the summer and it's really nice weather, as well as you have to have, because some of the meetings are evenings and some of the meetings are daytime. So to have meetings during the daytime during work, I have to thank my boss as well. So, you know, for her to allow me to take time to go ahead to some of these meetings and, uh, you know, make sure the whole is moving in a you know, forward direction. Um, and last thing, I just want to say thank you to Kevin. Um, so as everyone knows that when the uh, Mayor Gooby uh, quit back in January, uh, we kind of had, we we're kind of a standalone kind of thing. So we need to, you know, sort of have someone step up and represent Holyrood as best as, as we can. And I want to thank that, uh, you know, Mayor uh, Costello stepped up to the plate very quickly and uh, was able to go ahead and take Holyrood by the reins with council and town staff and lead us to where we are right now over the last nine months. And I got to say that the last nine months has been fantastic. There's been no issues. Everyone's getting along great. And I must say that, uh, you know, it's been a real pleasure working with you, Kevin, as mayor, and as well for the councillors over the last uh, last nine months under the new leadership of Kevin. Um, and that's basically it for me. So that's it for me. And I'm gone from council life and uh, I wish <laughs> everyone yet, the best. <laughs> well, yeah, a few more days, I guess. Yeah, but, you know. This is the last public media, I guess I could say that. But anyway, 
yeah, the point is that uh, I just wish everyone the best going forward. And uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing from me in the, in the future around municipal politics. Thank you, Councillor Maes. Um, so I guess just a few points for myself. Obviously, like many have said, the past four years have been uh, been very interesting um, for myself. My first term on council, had no idea what to expect. Um, and I definitely did not expect to be sitting in the mayor's chair during the uh, the end of my first term either. Uh, unfortunately, you know, due to my, uh, my work situation and whatnot, I just, I couldn't, wholeheartedly commit to uh, to continuing on so that was that was most of the reason uh reason for me not putting my name forward again uh, not saying i won't be able to uh, at some point in the future uh, but for the next four years um my professional life is uh, is taking the front seat uh again like to like to thank all members of council uh councilor Mayesh, councilor ganny councilor king deputy mayor buckle uh, really appreciate uh your, your words of encouragement there tonight. Um, you know, we we definitely got ourselves in a bit of a rough back early in uh, in 2021. But, you know, I think we uh, we all stuck together and we endured it. And uh, we came out the other side, um, a very cohesive and improved team. Uh, you look at some of the initiatives we've done with uh, communication, um, albeit not completed, and it, it, it never will be. It's an, it's an ever-evolving beast, uh, communication is, but it's well on the way to, to being you know, the best it's been, um, you know, communication is one thing, uh, you look at the, the projects we've currently got in the hopper, um, you know, potential new water supply for Holy Road is huge, um, asset integrity, you know, this is, this is the first time council ever understood all the capital equipment we have in the ground, um, you know, we've got an industrial park just about gone, we've got cold ocean research park just about gone, um, you know, from a recreation perspective, um, great recreation program. It's, you know, every concert and event that happens in Holy Road is, is vastly improved from the previous one. Um, you know, planning and development, uh, housing starts are, are at a very healthy rate. And, you know, it goes on and on and on. Great fire department. You know, right now in Holy Road, this term, we've got uh, three full-time firefighters in the daytime. That's great for a town this size. It's amazing. And uh, not only do they do they fight fires, but they're also available to uh, assist the ambulance service in the day um, during the day at daytime hours. So uh, very positive. You know, I, I definitely missed some of the initiatives uh, from the past four years, but just wanted to hit the high points. And uh, you know, a lot of this could not be accomplished uh, without the help of the dedicated staff we have at the town office. So the team that Gary leads uh, is a very dedicated team, and. Uh, and hopefully, when the next council comes in, um, you guys can uh, can get back, get right back on track, and, uh, and continue bringing this town to a very prosperous future. Uh, so, with that being said, um, I believe that's the uh, that's the end of the meeting. Um, so, the date of the next meeting is October the nineteenth, and it'll be uh, be with uh, the new council. Um, so with that being said, I'll uh, call for a motion to adjourn, please. Moved by the Deputy Mayor. Moved by the Deputy Mayor. Seconded by? Councillor King. Councilor Seconded by Councillor King. All those in, or discussion? Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those against? Motion is carried. Well, everybody, that's the, uh, that's the end of this term for this council. Uh, I'd like to, to thank you all. Um, again, apologize for the technical difficulties we had tonight and uh, weren't able to deliver you the live stream, but uh, the link and recording will be available on our website uh, in the next uh, short little bit. So again, thank you all and uh, get out and enjoy the nice evening. And don't forget to vote either uh, through the mail-in system or on the 28th at the polling station at the, uh, at the municipal building. Thank you all. Have a great evening and good night.